It's about Hartwood. Uh, but I ended up um, <laughs> with this first slide because I wanted to provide some, some context about uh, how I think about Zcash adoption and how that informs um, technical strategy decisions that I make. Um, so, and there's kind of a lot packed in here. So let, let me see if I can go over this. So first of all, uh, in the middle, you see there's um, a shielded pool and transparent Zcash. So uh, if you're not familiar with Zcash, um, we, we have these two sort of areas that you can um, keep your Zcash and they have different address types. Um, and the reason for this is um, largely historical. So transparent Zcash is uh, very similar to Bitcoin under the hood. Um, and when we launched Zcash, we were using the Bitcoin design and the Bitcoin code base and adding the shielded technology onto it. Um, so you can see here, there's representations of different kinds of services that are connected. And some of them are connected to transparent Zcash and some are connected to the shielded pool directly. Uh, and, and we have the same kinds of services potentially connected to each. So, you know, you see the symbol for hardware wallets. And if you look at the bottom in the center, that same symbol is there. Um, uh, this, this image I should point out is a little bit aspirational because currently, for example, there are no hardware wallets that support shielded Zcash directly. Um, so this is sort of what we hope to see in the future or what, could, what we could see with efforts. Um, and then the next thing I wanna draw your attention to is that there are three um, symbols that are red. And those are the, the areas that Heartwood is improving. So that's sort of like a map of what, what we might think Zcash looks like today. Uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the relationship between the shielded pool, transparent Zcash, and the services um, that people use. So the shielded pool uses the, the advanced privacy technology that's our claim to fame. And we really believe that that privacy is important for users. Um, and as we just heard from Mo, uh, it is really important for many users. Um, it's newer technology and we haven't seen it as widely adopted as the rest of transparent Zcash. And I think there are a few potential reasons for that. Um, and one just being that it, because it's newer technology, it requires um, more like software engineering to integrate it into products and services. Uh, by contrast, transparent Zcash is much simpler. It, it, it's easier to make a new integration to it just um, if you're doing that from scratch. But even furthermore, since it's so similar to Bitcoin, anything that supports Bitcoin can relatively easily support transparent Zcash just by tweaking a few things. Um, and so what this means is that as uh, Zcash adoption grows, we have these two frontiers. There's um, new products and services integrating into transparent Zcash and then new products and services integrating into the shielded pool of Zcash. Um, the, the rate at which new products and services integrate into transparent Zcash is higher, and I think it will continue to be higher for, for quite a while, as long as um, it's more convenient because there's infrastructure and tools already available to, to products and services that are doing the integration and they can easily um, plug in transparent Zcash. In order to get the shielded pool to expand further and cover most of Zcash, uh, we need to get the engineering side, the infrastructure side, um, down to where it's very easy and convenient for uh, services to adopt, integrate, and deploy, and operate. Um, so that's an ongoing effort. And that's one we're continuing to work on. Um, but I'm still not done with this slide uh, because I wanted to point out something that uh, um, often might escape uh, people's attention when they're thinking about transparency cache and, and the shielded pool. So if we imagine there's a service um, 
like let's say an exchange. So maybe at the at the bottom right, there's two little sort of uh, half arrows. Maybe that represents an exchange. Let's say that exchange only allows uh, transparent Zcash deposits. Well, for users who sort of live in the shielded pool, they can use that service directly. They can make a deposit into it and they're still benefiting from some privacy protections from the shielded pool. So in particular, if they make a deposit of 10 ZEC to an exchange um, on chain, it's visible that 10 ZEC were deposited and it's visible to which address. And people who are doing chain analy analytics can probably figure out that that address is related to that exchange. So they know somebody just made a deposit of 10 ZEC to that exchange. Um, but what they don't see is the depositing address, the sender. And so that's providing some protection to the user. Uh, and if we, we continue with the story and let's say that user um, the next day or the next week uh, decides to make a purchase on OpenBazaar. Um, OpenBazaar is sort of like a decentralized eBay. It's a, it's a marketplace where any vendor can show up and sell their goods um, and buyers can pay in different cryptocurrencies and they support transparent Zcash. So that same user could purchase something on OpenBazaar like um, artwork, I purchased artwork on OpenBazaar. And um, let's say they spend two Zcash on the artwork, they contact the vendor, um, give them their address and uh, the vendor, uh, their, their snail mail address and the vendor ships the art to their house. Um, so the interesting thing is anyone who's observing the chain can independently see that there's a deposit of Tenzec to an exchange and then um, elsewhere there is a purchase on OpenBazaar and they might be able to even identify that vendor because uh, they're using a transfer and address. But um, whoever's doing the observation won't necessarily be able to link those two interactions to the same user. And I think that's very powerful and very important uh, so the shielded pool is protecting that user, even though the services that they are using uh, only integrate into transparent Zcash. So transparent Zcash services are valuable to shielded pool users and shielded pool users still have some privacy protections when they're using those services. Now, there's a really important piece to the story because I, describe that this user lives in the shielded pool. And what does that mean? It can be a little bit nuanced, but the idea is if they tend to keep their Zcash in the shielded pool so that when they're doing these different transactions, these different interactions, um, there's not a direct connection between them, then they gain more privacy. Um, if, for example, they just, they, they have, uh, 10 Zcash in a transparent address and they send it into the shielded pool and directly out again, uh, that doesn't really give them much privacy because it's easy to see the funds going into and out of the shielded pool, even though you can't see which uh, address it's going to. And um, often if, if you see uh, similar amounts going in and out, especially if it's an unusual or unique amount, um, it's a pretty accurate guess to guess that it's the same individual just traversing the shielded pool. So the, the privacy of the shielded pool um, becomes stronger if users keep their funds there um, in order to decouple different events. So if they deposit 5ZEC one day into the shielded pool uh, because their friend sent them some, and then another day they purchase a thing for 2ZEC uh, on Open Bazaar, for example, then um, that that's giving them improved privacy. Now, the real ideal is for all of the interactions to happen completely in the shielded pool. And so we definitely want to integrate more goods and services and more counterparties directly into the shielded pool so that uh, they can have those interactions with very strong privacy. So that's kind of an overview of this model, um, but I wanna zoom in a little bit on this cross chain um, symbol. So we, we, it's the symbol with it, it's red and it has a bunch of little dots connected by lines. Um, if we imagine um, 
there's a cross chain bridge uh, connected to transparency cache. So that would be the one kind of on the right side of the slide. Um, let's just imagine with, you know, in our story, there's a connection over to Ethereum so that it's possible to send Zcash over to Ethereum where it will be um, represented by some Ethereum uh, state, um, some Ethereum token. And then that user can use that Zcash on Ethereum to participate in DeFi, decentralized finance, for example. If it's the same user we were just talking about, that interaction with DeFi, again, can be decoupled from their purchase on OpenBazaar and from their deposit on an exchange. So again, even though we're all the way over on Ethereum, uh, the user still has received a privacy benefit by living in the shielded pool initially. Um, and I think that's very powerful. So my mental model is that when we connect goods and services to transparency cash, we are um, giving a privacy protection option to anyone that wants to use any of those goods or services, even though it's only connected to transparency cash. Now that's, again, like I said, sort of the first bar, that's a great thing to happen and we wanna see that happen and it is happening and the rate at which it's happening is large because it's easy to integrate transparency cash. Then we want to follow up on, we wanna piggyback on that and we want to extend the shielded pool outward to cover all of those services as quickly as we can. Um, and doing that will make the privacy guarantees that much stronger. So uh, if you look at the top of the slide, there's a, another cross chain icon there, but it's connected to the shielded pool. And this is speculative, but it, it may be feasible to create shielded bridges where you can transport shielded deck from the Zcash blockchain over to a shielded pool, um, say in Cosmos or Ethereum. Uh, and so that would be amazing because then users would be able to transfer between chains and have very strong privacy. Uh, but if you think about even that case, even where we've extended the shielded pool across uh, chains, um, if the user is at the end of the day going to use, say, Ethereum DeFi, where most of those uh, smart contracts are completely transparent, they're still the same sort of dynamic where they live in the, sh the shielded pool. It happens to extend across chains, um, but sooner or later they emerge from the shielded pool to interact. And the larger we can extend the shielded pool, the closer we can get it to their interactions, um, the more protection we're giving them. So that is how I think about um, how privacy and adoption interact in Zcash and how we should be thinking about and moving forward with it. So that was a lot of context. Um, and given that context, now we can see Heartwood is making improvements um, for both transparent Zcash and for the shielded pool. Uh, so those are the red icons. So um, uh, yeah, and I'll get into that next. So there's two features in Heartwood. Um, but first, I just wanted to give a history of upgrades. So Heartwood is, um, we expect it to activate mid-July, although the activation height is not set yet. The activation height will be set in the 3.0.0 release. Um, and assuming that goes out on schedule, it activates around July. Um, there's something important here that I want to point out about the schedule. So if you look at when Zcash launched, it was October 28th, 2016. Um, the next upgrade over winter was, um, you know, between one and a half and two years later. So it took us a while to sort of um, get our bearings with uh, mainnet network and improve the base software that, you know, our Zcash D code base um, to, to file down rough edges and so forth. And also during that time, we were doing the research and development that became the sapling upgrade. But once we activated Overwinter, if you look from that date, June 2018, to um, the Heartwood activation date, which should be around July 2020, that's just barely over two years. And that's four upgrades in two years. So that's about two upgrades per year. And I think this is a, a really excellent quality um, 
uh, of Zcash that we do regular upgrades that are reliable. Some of them are more modest and some are um, more groundbreaking. So Overwinter was fairly modest. It just locked down some things and, and made them more secure for um, the case that there would be chain splits in the future. By contrast, Sapling was um, a major upgrade to the zero knowledge proving engine that Shielded Zcash uses. Um, and that represented a lot of work. And here we are continuing on with these upgrades. So now let's dig into the features of Heartwood. So the first one is um, we're introducing the ability to mine or generate new coins directly into the Shielded pool. So on the left side, you can see sort of a standard flow for miners and mining pools where um, the black circles are transparent and the gold ones are shielded. So on the left side, what we have today, often mining pools uh, mine to a transparent address because that's the only way to do it. Uh, but there's a rule that any newly issued coins must be shielded first. So they cannot be sent to another transparent address until they're um, uh, sent through the shielded pool. So often miners uh, shield and then immediately um, send those funds on, uh, sorry, the mining pools shield and then immediately send those funds on for a, a mining payout. And often uh, many miners receive transparent payouts. So what that looks like is that top path, those two hops, the two arrows on the left side. And like I said earlier, if you send funds into the shielded pool and then send them directly out with similar amounts, it doesn't actually provide very much privacy uh, because it's easy to link those transactions in and out. So that mining activity takes these two transactions to do the payouts and it doesn't really um, provide much privacy for those miners unless some of those miners receive their payouts uh, as shielded payouts. And there are some pools that support that. So um, that's really good to see. Uh, moving forward on the right side with Heartwood, um, there's this new option to mine directly into the shielded pool. So the top portion is exactly the same as the left side. And that's just representing that uh, mining pools don't have to change any of their behavior if they don't want to. But if they want to, they can do the bottom thing where they mine directly into the shielded pool. Um, their payouts can do, you know, can take one less hop. Um, and there's a potential privacy benefit uh, um, in a few ways. So one is often newly mined coins sit for a while before payouts happen. And in this right bottom case, uh, those funds will be sitting in the shielded pool for that amount of time. And the second privacy benefit is that um, if payouts are being done in a batch, uh, it's possible to tell uh, even, um, even if a miner is receiving their payout at a shielded address, it's possible for um, someone looking at the chain to guess, oh, this transaction here is a mining payout because it has a bunch of payouts to transparent addresses and it also has some payouts to shielded addresses. Um, that doesn't degrade the privacy of those miners very much, um, but in this new scheme, um, that issue is improved. So they can receive the, the payouts directly. Um, with, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little bit tripped up about that. So I'm not as sure about that. So let me walk that back. So um, the primary benefit is just to connect miners directly to the shoulder pool, allow these payouts to happen with one fewer transaction. And hopefully that allows miners to get more engaged with the shoulder pool. So that's um, Zcash Shelby Coinbase. Moving on, um, how am I doing for time? You are about a couple minutes over, but I think this uh, Zcash Fly client will be an excellent segue to the um, next speaker, Matt. So uh, All right. yeah, a couple, couple minutes I'll, over. I'll pick, so the next few slides are walls of text, but I'll, I'll pick just the, the best parts. <laughs> so there's several use cases for fly client uh, proofs. And what these are is um, they allow concise proofs about the proof of work history. Um, and what that helps is with any time you have a, a light client that needs to verify they have the correct 
chain history. Um, Fly client allows them to do that by receiving a relatively small proof from another node rather than needing to retrieve all of the block headers. Um, so that can be significant for light clients and there are multiple light client use cases. Um, and some of them are, I mean, often people think of like a mobile wallet and that is a, a potential use case, but actually light clients appear elsewhere, such as in cross chain bridges. Um, and this, um, this can also be helpful generally for full nodes. Um, so the cross chain bridges are the one we're, we're most excited about right now, um, as you'll hear about soon. Uh, if you can embed um, a light client um, ver verification in another blockchain's uh, consensus rules, usually like through a smart contract, um, then you're able to make a very uh, decentralized cross-chain bridge. So that is the use case of fly client that we're very excited about. Um, I'll skip this slide. This slide is basically why fly client versus other technologies. And the, the punchline is that fly client is something that works today that we know that we can deploy. And so we've done that. Um, but uh, in, in uh, concurrently, we're still doing uh, large scale scalability research and also research about how to do good light clients. So um, this is just a step, a practical step in that direction. Um, the last thing I wanted to say about Fly client that I'm very excited about is that this uh, Zcash feature improvement was the result of collaboration across uh, many different experts uh, outside of ECC along with ECC. So the research wasn't specific to Zcash, but we engaged with those researchers. And then we also had multiple people working on the protocol spec. And in that list there, only Jack Grigg, the, the uh, last name out of four was an ECC employee when, when this was done. Um, and then the last bullet point points out that the implementation work was done both by ECC and Parity. So I think the punchline for this slide for me is um, this would be the first feature uh, getting deployed to Zcash that involves multiple researchers and organizations um, all collaborating, which to me is very exciting for Zcash. Okay, so that's, that's that.